It's time to upgrade my ultra lightweight 6.5 PRC hunting rifle with some parts and accessories from Salmon River Solutions. All that in this video. Gavin Gay here from ultimatereloader.com. Salmon River Solutions is a new company focused on parts and accessories. These are premium parts, premium accessories for ultra lightweight hunting rifles like this full custom 6.5 PRC right here. I've recently partnered up with them and in this video we're going to kick off some really cool upgrades to this rifle. Salmon River Solutions offers titanium muzzle brakes. They have conventional brakes including ones that you time and self-timing brakes and then there's their Thai Pro lineup of premium muzzle brakes. This Thai Pro 2 weighs 1.3 ounces and is going to do a great job taming the intense recoil of the 6.5 PRC. Intense recoil? Well, yeah, when you strip it down to an ultra lightweight form like this, I've got a carbon fiber stock, I've got a titanium action, I've got a carbon wrap barrel. You know, you're gonna feel that a bit. And anything you can do to, to tame that recoil so that you can see where your shot is landing is definitely a good thing. So I've got the Thai Pro 2, they got a bunch more breaks. If you click on that first link in the video description, I'll go into more detail there. They also have a bunch of rails. They have a unique offering. Salmon River Solutions is the only company to offer a combo Arca and Picatinny rail. So if you have two different types of accessories that you're using like bipods, you want the option to run Arca or Picatinny, great solution. What I have here is this is their mini Arca rail here and I have the four inch rail. This is the one I'm gonna install on the rifle in this story. It's got a beveled contour here that's going to fit the bottom of the stock if you want to do a direct mount. I'm going to take this over to the milling machine and mill a flat area and use these outer rail areas. So if you're going on the bottom of a chassis, it's going to mount right up. If you've got a hunting rifle, you can install it with no machining. It is also ultra lightweight. This is 1.2 ounces. Uh, I'm really excited about this because I've pretty much converted everything over to Arca on my rifles for both hunting, well, I'm working on that, hence the story, and for you know long distance shooting PRS rifles and so on and so forth. Arca is great because it's really easy to adjust the position of your bipod or your bag rider for a bench rest scenario. And I just got this really cool. This is the QDT tripod from Two Vets. Say you're in a field hunting scenario, you've got your tripod and you've got your rifle, you want to quickly deploy, click in and shoot. This Arca rail is going to make that happen. So in this story, we're going to do a timing job on the brake and get that installed on the rifle. I've got this really heavy stainless steel brake on there. It'll be great to get that off and get the titanium brake on there. And then we're going to uh, face mill this bottom section of the stock just ever so slightly so we have it parallel with the bore axis. I just feel like that's an elegant thing to do and get the four inch Arca rail installed. All that next. So the first thing we're gonna do is to get the barreled action out of the stock so that we can mill the appropriate area for the Arca rail. light that stock that's from benchmark okay and we need to get our swivel studs off and what's nice about this stock is that I have QD cups you can see this one right here and one on the butt stock so getting rid of these swivel studs is definitely not a problem. <laughs> there we go. Okay, over to the milling machine. Oops, 
like things are fitting real well. All we need to do now, hit this up with some thread locker, get these screws in that I just shortened. Well, there she is. We got the rail installed. Let's see how it looks in the Two Vets tripod. Probably want to put this as far forward as we can there. That's nice. That's really solid. I like the fact that it's parallel with the borax. It's just in case I decide to put a bag rider in there and shoot it off of the bench rest. It just looks more elegant to me that way. So now we can take our Tie Pro 2. We're just going to screw this on and see where she's landing in terms of timing. Okay. So we're at about 20 degrees. And so if we take 340 divided by 360 in terms of the angle, that's 0.94 or 94%. So one divided by 24 threads per inch is 0.042 inches thread to thread. That's the pitch. So if we take th that times 0.94, we get we need to take off 39 thousandths. Now I'm not going to take off 39 thousandths. We're going to work our way up because I want to make sure that I get just the right amount of crush and torque. That's the hypothetical value. The other thing I'm going to take a look at here is what is the diameter of the shank here on the end, 816. So we'll profile the back to match. That should look really good. Let's go over to the lathe. So this is my new lathe. This is a Precision Matthews TL1660. It's also equipped with the True Bore alignment system. This guy is awesome. It uses a six draw chuck. You can do radial and axial alignment. I put a test rod in there. I've got this running perfectly true. And then I also put some protective tape here where we're gonna be clamping onto the brake. So the first thing I'm gonna do is gonna be to just get this kind of mounted. We're going to want to make sure that we have jaws landing nicely in good areas there. Give it a little bit of a torque down. Doesn't take a whole lot. We're going to be just taking some light cuts here. All right, we're ready to cut some metal. All right, so I'm going to go up against the shoulder here, the end, and just barely tap the tool against and we're going to zero our Z axis. Okay, so hypothetically now anything we go in is going to take off that amount of material. I'm running 900 RPM. That's going to be good for the titanium. I've got an uncoated uh, carbide bit. Let's do some cutting. So my cut sheet says 39. I'm going to go 30 and we're going to check it. So we're just going to go ahead and screw it on and see where she lands. Okay, I've got a little bit to go. I'm going to say that's about 30 degrees. Okay, so sure enough, after checking the angle, it looks like I've calculated we needed to go 3.4 thousandths of an inch more, and we it said we needed to go nine more. This has been my experience. If you cut all the way to what you think it's going to be, you've gone too far. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe around two and a half or actually even less given that we need some crush, not quite that much crush. So I'm going to go maybe like one and a half and we'll check again. I'm going to need to re-zero the DRO, 
against this outer edge here. Gentle pressure. Okay, let's take off that thousandth and a half. where that 1.6 thousandths of an inch took us. Ooh, that's gonna crush down, I think, pretty good. All right, I'm gonna get some protection on this for the wrench, and we'll see where she lands. So I don't want too much torque here because I'm gonna be alternating between a suppressor and this brake periodically. So, Looks like we need to take a little bit more off. Let's see what that will do. Okay, hopefully final cut. So I've got some TW25B grease on here. Let's see how this is gonna go. Noticed a little bit of, a little bit of binding last time. Okay, that looks awesome. Look at that. Okay, so Salmon River Solutions recommends some Loctite if this is gonna be a permanent install, but since I'm alternating you know, between the suppressor, I'm gonna forego that. We have one more thing to do here, and that's to contour the back. So we're back at the lathe. I've got the brake in the 60 yard check. Just reviewing my notes, it looks like we need to be at 816. And currently we are at about 864. So for a really quick dial in, we can touch the tool and then we're gonna call that, our X is point eight six four and we'll take a, a quick pass down to eight fifty and see if the diameters agree. That should be right at about eight fifty and we can always correct it if not. Eight forty eight four. So let's see, X is 1.84. Yep, yeah, okay. 8.16 is where we need to be. Take an intermediate pass here. Just a touch over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to back out my cross slide to taper it. Ready for it? Okay. I'm going to take that one more time. 16. Okay. And here we go. Give that nice little taper. Clean up the edge just a touch there. Okay, we'll unwrap our tape and see where we're at. All right, final fitting. This is kind of a nice treatment. We've got a straight section without taper that's gonna match the diameter of the end of the shank, the barrel there. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. Let's give her a little tighten. This is, this is a nice way to do this because you've got the straight section and then you've got a, a little bit of a taper behind that. That's perfect. That's just how I wanted that. Let's peel off the tape and see the finished result. 
The tape is just to protect those wrench flats. And look at that. Now that, now that is a pro looking install on that. I really, really like that. Very cool. So here's the completed rifle. We've got an Arca rail. We've got an ultra lightweight four port tie pro brake. This is awesome. I am totally happy with the finished product. This was already a great lightweight hunting rifle. Now it's absolutely outstanding. A four port brake on the front, ultra lightweight. I've got my Arca rail installed. That means I can switch between the two vets, tripod and any bipod that I've got with Arca. Absolutely loving it. If you wanna know more about the products featured in this video, go to Salmon River Solutions. Dot com. And here's what I want to know is what do you think? What do you think of this awesome 6.5 PRC rifle? And what do you think of the products that I showed? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. By the way, I heard your feedback about wanting to see more machining. Took my time in this video, did a little bit more with you as I was machining. Hopefully that is enjoyable. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.